Adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 143. As always, I'm in the booth with the big three. Michael, the show, Pirelli. Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela, with the best camera we wow. got. Look at him looking good. He's so much more than a voice. And now. I am Dave, nickname. the body, Regina. Another week, um, we are going to do some questies that came in from March. By the time this airs, I guess, se- second week of April. So happy spring to you. If you're springing right along, because that's what we're trying to do here at No Snooze. Right, Mikey? Is it spring already? Right? Isn't that crazy? You know what that means. Yard work. It's around the corner. <laughs> What'd you say before? Um, tall, dark, and... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, a favorite pastime when I do just kill some time is to watch some uh, handyman stuff on YouTube. And a lot of the times, the names of the titles of the channels are uh, play on words. So one of the guys is tall, dark, and handy. And wow. I'm like, that's incredible. <laughs> that is very good. I might add that to my bio. That is very good. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a tagline. You know what? I don't know if you're you're a big show guy, but back in the day, speaking of uh, handy, I, I don't know why this just popped in my head, but I used to watch with my father, uh, Home this Improvement. Uh, home Improvement. CV, you know that show? Timmy the that's Tool how Man. To that's do right. A home renovation. So I'm not a show guy. I mean, I'm not a movie guy, but I am a show guy. I used to watch that. It's pretty good, too. Right? Yeah. Isn't it? I think shows were more of a thing. More sitcoms are more of a thing mm-hmm. back in the day. I'm still like rolling. Like family stuff. I'm st- yeah, talk about family stuff. I'm rolling right along with Narcos. I mean, it's killing <laughs> me at night. Sometimes I got the booms crazy. But yeah, I'm good. You, you know, keep I'm, it. I'm trying to do it like earlier in the in the evening. Then I'll throw even a little extra Joel right before I go to bed, so I could so I could fall asleep. But man, this is this is serious. Yeah, I don't like it because I go right into dreams of like running away from the cartel. That was me, man. I'm yeah, telling you, and it happens it. all the time. But and now Pablo's on the on the run. I'm trying to rest. Now he's on the run. Oh, CV, what does what does this mean when he says, um, <laughs> "plato o plomo"? Something about lead or or what? Oh, okay, lead. lead or money? Or yeah, money. yes. So got pay it. your money or take bang, his bang. lead. Ah, God, he's you. gonna start saying that to people. But the way he says it with the mustache, it's so. Dave's gonna be like plantains <laughs> or what was the other one? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, any any new exciting news? So much, so much excitement. We did excitement? the baptism. <laughs> okay, okay, um, saw that. Beautiful. A lot of fun. I mean. It is when you know how it is when the families get together, people are are flowing. Bella Nona, shout out Bella Nona, Lincoln, and we had the whole place locked down. They had trains in the backyard, the Grand's train station, so the kids were watching the (laughs) trains waving. Um, Great food, great time, good people. It, it, I have to say, as crazy as life gets with the family, whatnot, my favorite time, and I say it all the time, is when everyone's together. You know, there's food, there's Mm -hmm. drinks, and it's loud, and the decibels are high. You like can't hear yourself think because people yep. are chatting and and there's random people talking to each other. Like, oh, I never knew they would be friends, you know, from different sides yes, of the yes, family. Yes. Um, so it was great. That was cool. Frank and Alyssa came down. We spent a lot of time with the uh my my nephews and then my other nephew and then my extended second cousins, I guess technically the I call them nephews, but they're not technically Close, or nice. nieces. Um Friday, I went to George Steakhouse in Byram, which I haven't been, I've been dying to go. I call the guy's name's Davey's nice guy. I'm like, yeah, we're going to come. We're going to do some content, blah, blah, blah. We, we try to focus on one menu item. So mm-hmm. we're going to do steak, obviously. He's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like he yesed me to death. And I'm like, so we show up, me and Chris. Ashley was not available. My man sends out a seafood tower to start the meeting. Wow. Starts pouring wine left and right. Ends up throwing in a tomahawk steak Oof. for daddy. Oof. Chris, They made Chris eat, which he never eats on set. They start sending out homemade focaccia. Oh, uh, get me hungry. They gave me some cognac. I uh, saw that, by the way, because you always used to make fun of me for drinking Hennessy, and Hennessy's a cognac. Cognac, yeah. You know? I, I enjoyed it. I told them. I told them what I tell everyone. I'm easily influenced when I'm with a group. Right. Whatever you're drinking, I'm drinking. I yeah. think I want them over when I said that. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, we're going to get them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they send out the steak. We went behind the scenes. We were talking to the guys cooking. Um, one of them was a chef for the president. I don't know if it was true, but I was like, you know, yeah, mm. sure. Um, steak cut fries, mm. cream spinach, Oof. but not so much cream, more spinach. 
so it was probably on our diet. Okay. Um, it's probably on our diet. <laughs> we ha- I eat the whole T bone or the whole, uh, the whole Tomahawk. Tommy. Reasonable Tommy prices to the there too. Big. You go to like a J House, and I like J House. Great 200. vibe there. Two hundred, yeah. easy. This was like ninety five, probably. Oh wow, Not reasonable. Bad. Okay, cash. It was comfortable, a little upscale, but they were super welcoming. Gotcha. We could not leave the place. We were there for three and a half hours. Uh, at the end of the meal, he made me have four desserts. Mm. Try four different desserts: a lemon cello shot, homemade lemon cello, uh, sambuca, and an espresso, and then the cognac. Mm. My poor Chris, I was like, dude, you need a ride. Like, Camera work okay? is like, <laughs> I'm a big dude. I, you know, I've trained for this. Um, but I can't say no. I'm really excited to go back and uh, like have a nice date night or like go with the boys yep. or some type of event where I'm not working because when you're, you know how it is when you're when you're like at one of your events that you're hosting, mm-hmm. you can't really enjoy, enjoy yourself it. to the extent because there's a job to do right. and you're kind of thinking through everything. So I'm looking forward to kind of revisiting some spots that I've shot content. Um, just as a civilian. That's cool. Let's do it. I know CV and I are both in. Yeah. Uh, they cooked it. Do you, how rare do you like your steak when you're a steak? The, <sighs> this bad boy made sometimes, me feel like a man. Sometimes it's a little too much. I'd, ra- I'd rather, um, me- perfect medium is good. Sorry. The rare. Dry one. age, 25, 30 days. Have you had dry age steak a lot? No, not, not so really. So how it was explained to me was because of the drying process, process, the the switch from crust mm-hmm. to juicy interior like flesh is a lot faster. Flesh, so when they cook right. it off, you're able to cook it a little more rare because all that salt and whatever's trapped because it the the outer parts pull out moisture, but the inside gets stuck because it creates kind of like a seal. Wow, that's good, Dave. It was cr- it was like almost eating like m- a tender steak on a cracker. Oof, oof. It was that buttery, it was salty, it was oil, butter, sizzling. Did this give you the inspiration to um, yeah. dry hang your sausage from yeah. your uh, yeah. from your car oh. and the air freshener? So, that's that's unique, Michael. So, Michael, so that's, yeah, that's That was unique. a meeting. We had a meeting yesterday because um, we're doing that pop-up event, which I was talking about, yep. uh, figuring out a name. But uh, we had a nice sit-down with the crew over there. And basically what we're trying to do is do the girl that I work with is big into events Mm -hmm. and I've been steering away from them because I'm like, it's a lot of work. She's going to lead it. And this is a community where we've done a lot of business. So I'm like, this compliments. This is a great 100 year old uh, dry sausage recipe. Everyone in the community knows them. It's like family oriented, all that good stuff. So let's do an event highlighting their food and kind of in different ways, you know, sausage on pizza, sausage, egg and cheeses, sausage and peppers, sausage and peppers, uh, you know, maybe Italian ices at the end of compliment. So we had a meeting and their thing is they just start cutting dry sausage while you're having meetings and just start feeding you stuff. Mm. So I'm sitting there super hot, unbelievable. Then like the medium and this and that at the end, we're all leaving like great meeting. And he just starts throwing us like hanging sausage. He's like, Mike, you want the extra? And he throws it to me. And like, I throw it around my neck and then I get in the car and I'm like, Oh, what do oh, I do with perfect. it? I just hang it. What's that called? When the, you hang like the dice? rear view mirror, rear view mirror. But what's that called? It's like, what? uh, the name it's like a, or I forget what the ter- term is, but, um, I was like, how funny it would be if like a client came into my car and they just saw this hanging there. How funny would it be if you got pulled over by the police and they just saw sausage hanging it's from just, I think you're a drug dealer. Like, my man is just, we got to cut those sausages open. There's got to be something in there. What is he doing? It's funny, too, because it's distracting. As you're driving, yeah, there's yeah. this big sausage that's, like, leaning one way or the other. It's, it's, <laughs> it's funny. It's basically, like, two you-know-whats hanging from your uh, yeah, from your, yeah. from your rear yeah. view. Uh, <laughs> Only you. Only so you. I, between uh, probably when I announced I was going off my own until – Beginning of March, it was slow. Like things were happening, but at a slower pace. Mm-hmm. And then when March hit, it was like we were shot out of a cannon. And like all the showings or uh, showings are starting to uh, turn up. All of the uh, the tell Mike saying episodes are getting in production. So it's like starting to get back into a routine, mm-hmm. which is I don't know how you feel, but when I'm busy and I'm knocking things off the list, yep. it's a lot easier to add more to the plate and mm-hmm. get things done versus like only having one thing to do. Yes. And you kind of procrastinate on that one thing. Yep. Versus if you have no option, you have to get it done. You just knock stuff out. Very true. Very How you true. been? All right. All right. I mean, I'm uh, not too happy this week. I had some personal items uh, mm-hmm. stolen. Oh, boy. Yeah. Won't well, maybe in- tell tell the community. Maybe they can <laughs> find it for us. Yeah. We won't get into the specifics of, you know, what was stolen. Never mind. Some, uh, you know, some valuable items to me <laughs> uh, stolen from my, my, uh, my personal belongings, man, which is, it's kind of like. 
I'm struggling though because I'm blame. I'm trying not to, but I feel like blaming myself, and I'm looking at holes that maybe I wasn't protecting myself enough. Um, you know, did I accidentally leave something out? Did I accidentally leave something unlocked? And I think it has to do with kind of the lifestyle that we live. You know, you're always kind of placing the blame on yourself. When in reality, I was talking to somebody pretty close to me. They're like, you're a victim here. Don't, don't, you know, like <laughs> you, you're actually a victim here. You know, you, you got stolen from. It's a good point. Uh, you know, I, the extreme ownership thing works, yeah. but sometimes it's counterproductive, mm -hmm. which is the hard thing. Cause right. it's like, at what point do I have to take all the, right, right. because what if it's not my fault at all? Yes. And it's healthy not to know that mm -hmm. so you can move to the next thing and not get all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, but work work is uh work is going well. Um, team is in a good spot. Uh, C V and company, they have uh, you know, one of the college tours coming up this week. Where are we going? Um, where are we going, C V? We are going north, northwest. So we're going to Albany and we're going to Buffalo. Oh, okay. I thought you were just going to say direction. But you're doing like, a, that doesn't help you're me. You're doing some cool stuff too, right? Some uh, Niagara Falls. And are, you going to, are you getting Buffalo Wings? Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's, let's talk. Business. While in Buffalo, we will be attending. Uh, this, Where are you going? This, Did you scout it out? What? Uh, the Buffalo Wings spot. Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Dino Barbecue. That's it's a chain, a, isn't it? It is. But it's not just any you old You broke my it's heart. It's not any old chain. You it is. Well, my okay, so it's in be Stanford. Honest, is it? You go to no, Stanford. It used to be in Stanford. Really? Dino Barbecue? Yeah. It's oh, a chain. Wow. I know it's in Manhattan. You it's like broke, Applebee's. You're bringing the kids to Look Applebee's. at me. Look at me. <laughs> broke my heart with that well, guy. I mean, I you're can't. going to Buffalo <laughs> and you're not getting Buffalo wings at like a local establishment. Well, hold on. Support hold local, goddammit. I'm going with uh with you know with children and you know it's it's a big ordeal. However, so you're cheating them. One of my one of my best friends is from Buffalo. Okay. And whenever I would go up there with him, we would hit Chippewa, um, the Chippewa Street or Avenue or whatever it is. Okay. And for those that know, that avenue in Buffalo is one of the largest bar wing like avenues like okay, in Buffalo. Talking. That's where you want to go if you want to hit some that some good, good spots. Now we're talking. That sounds so good. so is there a time to yourself where like you can take the kids there and then when they all go to sleep right, you just like sneak to the real spot? Yeah, kids don't sleep. So that's fair. <laughs> it's a good point. Get <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, C V, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I have to literally force myself to sleep and pray that in the morning they're all in their rooms. They're all there, right? <laughs> oh Jesus. Um in Niagara Falls too, right? Yes, we'll cool. be going some to Niagara cool, Falls for cool a little stuff. bit, and you know, I think it's going to be a little rainy and cold, so I'm not, you, you'll, be a fun you guys experience. better enjoy it. This is an expensive one. That's uh, right. Uh, this is no joke. Well, you right. you've writing that check? I mean, not me personally, okay, but she's yeah, right out our, the pocket. our organization. Damn. You got an extra seat? My, um, I'm right out of my budget. Nothing gets me more frustrated when I'm in a place and I have to have like the touristy thing versus like the authentic thing, yep. and I know it, and I'm going through it, nothing... Because sometimes you go to a big crew, mm -hmm. logistically, it's just easier to go to a spot yeah. like that, which yeah. now I understand what you're saying, but nothing gets me like internally more frustrated, like anxiety ridden, right. knowing that like that Buffalo spot is right next to right there. And I'm here. Mm -hmm. But it's good though. I mean, this this dino barbecue is-, is Oh, it's the real we, deal. So we've yeah. we've been there before. You better show we, yourself, man. We better switch oh, right. these cameras. No, I mean, I'm looking We went good. to- uh, Look, we at went to Look at those levels. Look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we went to Buffalo- few years ago on a college tour and we ended up going there kind of not really knowing i hadn't known about it because i went to the one in manhattan i knew it was good and um you know we know that it's it's delicious food the mm. kids are gonna love it it's barbecue everything so it's you know it's kind of what the kids like so it's an easy it's a win-win yeah when you look smart. at it that way smart you're yeah. on a business trip <laughs> right wait, wait. i get it so that's actually the same place but different location that when i came up to one of the tours you guys were finishing a trip you gave me like a wrong time frame and then you called. Oh yeah, that was the place. And I went by myself. I think I heard sat, about this story. Sad ass. Yeah, this was talked on the podcast. I'm Italian. Good, and I thought it was Dino Barbecue. So <laughs> you're like, where's Dino? At? Hey, Dino, where are you? Where's Dino, the Italian? Where so I literally, I'm having like five Jack Italian and Cokes and Dino Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yo, uh, okay, you know, where's, the, uh, where's Dave? Where's definitely Dave? strategic. You're Absolutely. like, you know, I'm going to the wrong Even place. Even though Absolutely. alone, though, tell me it was not good. Yes, did you not right. enjoy it? I brought you okay. some. Remember? Yeah, you did. I'm yeah, a good I, guy. I, I threw good it guy. down. I this, brought you some. This, here's a good test to see if um, our families listen to this. Um, on family trips, sometimes I don't want to like inconvenience people, mm -hmm. but I'll sneak out and get a little snack. Like while we're like, say we're walking on the boardwalk or whatever. Yep. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Like I'm going to check out this store. And then I go to like a pizza spot. Oh. I'm like, that pizza looks good. You know, when you, sometimes you need the spot in 80. When you're in these things, less planned out. Yeah, you, you yep. sneak in a slice or a little. I just thought of a boardwalk when you're saying that. That's that's good stuff. It's nice. As um, not the zeppelins, but the the uh, fried Oreos. <sighs> you, you would be oh, a fried Oreo. I am. Um, you look like a fried Oreo. What? Fun fact: 
So I have never, I had never tried fried Oreos before in my life. And in the last three weeks, uh, we have a, a lady that that cooks, uh, does like a little cooking thing with our with our kids in, in, in the after school. Fried like Oreo a chef. Lady. And she did fried Oreos. And oh my God. Yeah, yeah. It's dangerous. It's one of the most delicious. It's a donut with an Oreo inside, yeah, basically. Oh, yes, right? Yes. Claudio's hilarious. He saw yeah, me oh eating one God. of them. Oh yeah. my God. And the chick was there. And she's like, <laughs> she, she works for him directly, right? But- she stops by my office, you know, takes care of, you know, the commissioner. Double eggs and, and whatnot. So he saw me eat this. And he's like, what about me? What about me? You're not giving me? <laughs> so now I can this. see, I can see Those, she probably, oh. they, she probably just dropped them off a whole, uh, whole boatload of them now. You got to be careful with those, though, because you can put down 10 easy. People yes. who don't like food, yes. I'm skeptical. Easy. You see how we're having this combo? Easy. And it's spirited. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a great, great connection here. Mm-hmm. The people that you do this and you don't connect with anything, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not into yeah. food. I don't trust those people. <laughs> right, right, Would you right. agree with that? Yeah, they can listen to this Something's next part. Something's going of the, on. They can listen to the next part of the podcast. We got to stay on time, though. Yeah, you're right. Because Michael has a you're big, right. big meeting. Listen, I talked about getting passion back in my life, and it's through my stomach. Yep. There you go. Would you agree? <laughs> That's my last point. Very funny. CB, let them know where we get this protein at. Then hit us with Questy numero uno. We wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know that we partnered with our good friends over at Orgain.com. We're happy to offer our listeners 30% off by entering the code NOSNOOZE30. Again, that's NOSNOOZE30 for 30% off your first order. If you're on the market for a new protein powder, nutritional shake, protein bar, or Mike's favorite, collagen peptides, Orgain is your one-stop shop. As all of you know, my Crohn's disease is currently in remission, and the only protein I use is from Orgain. My personal favorites are the chocolate peanut butter and the vanilla bean. With the code, you can try a two-pound tub for under $20. Talk about not snoozing. Go get yours today. Now, back to the epi. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> now that you got your Orgain protein, you're getting buff like daddy. Not me. <laughs> look, at you, look at your biceps, though. They They're so flat. I got no definition. <laughs> Look at that. There's no no definition. <laughs> I'm a thesaurus currently. Thesaurus? Why? Why? No, why? No, no, de- de- other. no definition. It's thesaurus. Oh, that's good. That was like, good. I used to use that as a. Wait, as to talk can you flex people. again? Can you flex? No, I can't. Why is one, we'll go back on the replay. No I didn't flex both. You know, my left arm's a little. little one looks light. way bigger than the other. What's going on? <sighs> at least here? your kids call him one. Well, he's big. hanging sausages from his. <laughs> yeah, I've been eating dry <laughs> sausage for four months. What do you expect, CB? No, I'm gonna tighten up quick. I tighten up quick. I release so. Him very easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go with let's the get questions. It. Um, I've been working hard on trying to develop motivation, and it's much harder than I thought. I've been reading that motivation is often the first step, but I'm not sure I agree. I have two specific goals: one to lose 10 pounds by summer, and one to launch my not-for-profit to benefit children with H- ADHD by next fall. My son struggles struggles from it pretty heavily my question is what else besides motivation can i focus on is there an age limit for the adhd i was gonna say michael needs to enroll I, in can i be a part <laughs> of a profit <laughs> yeah i need that for sure. michael needs to enroll uh no that's pretty cool actually very nice uh for I, I got a thing right nice. off the bat focus on one of them don't do both do one first, then the other after. Yeah, like one goal at a time. But I like I like the two goal specific thing. That's fine. But basically, what you're saying is the you're focusing on motivation, and I do think at times we blame a lack of results on motivation and discipline too often. Um, I think you need to have a strong focus on your environment when you're setting goals. Uh, motivation is great, but again, that's not something that comes every day right you you start a goal you might really peak have peak motivation we'll call it uh but then at some point motivation's not real right so like if somebody if you haven't put in enough work to where you're so confident in in that work that you're doing somebody downplays what you're doing somebody gives you a negative comment somebody comes at you a little bit motivation then falls off very quickly right Discipline, I think, is the the willpower. It's attached right to willpower. But that's also problematic because I think we only have a finite amount of willpower daily. Right. I feel like I, this is me. This is me now that I'm now that I'm thinking about this specific. Um, 
when you're constantly going through your day and you're just like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. Your bandwidth. Yes, you're great in that moment, but your bandwidth over the course of the day begins to lessen. You Fatigue. can't be at a thousand all the time as much as I want to. But the thing that you can focus on instead of just motivation is the environment and your surroundings around you. So it doesn't drain your willpower, basically. Yes. Yeah, so, so like, it, don't stand in a deli. Correct. If you're gonna be right. Like, if you're sure. trying to lose 10 pounds, my question to you, well, honestly, this is a great goal because it's not too much weight and you have time. Um, so I like that. But like, what are the the physical cues I'm attaching to to uh, I'm attaching that to environment? You know, are you stacking your house, you know, with donuts because you have kids? Not really a bad excuse, but look at the environment that's around you. Right. Um, or are you very intentional about what you have in the f uh, in your fridge? Um, for the business model, right, your environment, I would personally get two or three books that fit directly with what I'm trying to do for that not for profit and throw them on my coffee table. Mm. Put one in, the, you know, by the toilet area when you go to the bathroom, one on the coffee table, just so you're seeing these things. Um, I think the environment has a, a much greater impact than we think. Look at parties, right? Like if you're at a party where everybody around you is drinking, you're like, let's get it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Your environment is very influential uh, when it comes to, to that stuff. So I would say set the environment and then you can rely on, you know, the motivation and hopefully build discipline. Uh, nailed it. Were you going to say that? Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I thought to the point, I was literally going to say the same you know. words. <laughs> <laughs> there was, yeah. um, there, I remember when COVID hit first and I started to work from home full time. And the fact that I was literally steps away from the fridge. Yes. I gained five pounds just by being just in being, that new environment. Being, Food is a really good one. It's, it's, yeah, it's easy a good one to for, attach for to. environment, for sure. Dana started making cookies for like a little side thing mm. that she does, and she really enjoys it. Mm. Dave, I'm staring at these things all day. Yeah, yeah. So well, you're eating. By the way, I'm these. pretty sure there was a request oh, yeah. from last episode. Yeah, where, Dane, what's what, going what on? Happened? They all went. What we'll oh, make one. Mike ate them all. Believe me. Mike's <laughs> environment ate them all. But Mike, <laughs> Mike put himself in the environment. But but even having stuff out, like I have a dry sausage on my counter. That thing's getting consumed. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. So but that's all of us too. Like yeah. when Callie, she's big on the Krispy Kremes because they it's do them fresh. With they kids, fresh. it's hard because you basically have like an exterior piece of you yeah, right, right. that is like your bad part that is just always in go <laughs> yeah. and always tempting you yeah right yeah speaking of cali because you're getting about, them even if you're not doing it you're seeing it you're handing it to them and you're like no one's stopping well, me talk though. about the environment i mean cali she set me up for failure yesterday she literally she was like um dally i got you ice cream comes home with haagen -Dazs, like my two favorite flavors one had to Sweet. it was like a cookie crumble with Rocky Road mixed with Oreos, and it was this big, and I literally ate the entire thing because I'm like, there's no way that I'm not going to do that. I mean, sweetest gesture in the world, but yeah. To your point, though, you know. if you're dialed in elsewhere, yes. you can do that. Yes. And I think those moments are more important. Like, you don't want to waste calories. That's just like every, like wasting money, wasting calories. Yep. Like, you don't want to just mindlessly snack on some because when that happens, you want to eat that. Right. And you feel Absolutely. like, you know, and if you're doing, you're doing two bad things versus one, it's mm -hmm. like... So, yeah, and I think the other thing you said about learning, like for me, I default to, all right, if I'm going to lose weight, I have to learn how to lose weight. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus just try to put your head in, like right. try to be strategic about it. Yeah. Like, um, like I, I'm pretty familiar with the 501c3 process, which is not for profit, like this individual said. Um, we had just created one, not only at our job, but one of the um, boards and commissions that I'm on, but it's an extensive process, mm -hmm. you know, and everything has to be done to a T and there is a, a real learning curve. I mean, you have, you have time. I think she, she said spring or fall next fall or something. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, but you have a timeline, which is good, but that timeline will really creep up on you. And to your point, if you're not really learning, you know, and you don't have things in your environment that are going to yeah. help you do that, it's going to be tough. Another trick is to, what I like to do is engage someone else in the process so mm. that you don't want to let them down. So you can't cancel. Ooh. So like, um, I, what's an example? Uh, 1031 exchanges, right? I mm -hmm. want to get more dialed in on how they work so that yep. I can potentially do them in the future if I need to, right. or at least be very thorough with my clients. Mm. So the first step That's it is, I, I asked the mutual friend, hey, do you have a contact that you trust? I always default to asking people who I trust if they have a contact, because it's a lot easier than going blind because that person might not respond to you mm -hmm. and then you get discouraged versus you know you're going to get someone yep. and at least have an initial combo. So I, the first step was to ask for a contact. Then you feel guilty of not calling that contact because this person sent you it 
and they're going to be like, did you ever talk to him? And if you say mm-hmm. no, you look like an asshole. So I, I try to be a little more um, accountable to other people, and yes. I get a lot more done because I don't want to go back to them and say, I didn't never call the person. Because mm. then no, they're never going to send you contact again. Good point. And al- almost to that same area you said about verbalizing, this is a different component, but um, you've done this well, where you put things out and you verbalize. So you don't have to, f- you know, put it out publicly, but verbalize these goals to individuals, right, that that are around you, um, supportive individuals specifically, or even that's if, part even of your not, environment. Though. Even yeah. if they're not, even if people are making fun of you, it gives you another angle of motive. If that works for you. So like for me, I say the handy thing yes. and people shit on me. My, I mean, my friends and family, yep. but it makes me motivated because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to, you know. Yep. Even, um, even your social media devices, right? This is something that, um, you know, I, I've. I've actually looked at on my on my personal account. Um, there was, you know, just some things that I felt like I needed to clean up. So I cleared my ca- what is it, cache, cleared my cache, and I started typing in. Um, and it had to do with with faith stuff, right? Because I wanted more faith stuff popping up on my timelines versus you know these random these random models. I mean, sometimes they just pop up all over the place. I don't know if you guys can relate. You know, it's like Instagram is like looking I've been at, a lot. Of <laughs> um, so I cleared my cache, uh, but you begin to change your environment. You follow three or four people that are in that direct field and then you type you know little taglines that fit with what you're trying to do so for you you could do not for profit adhd a picture of michael might show up um you know <laughs> Drop a it's, like. it's a very simple way to just change the environment around you utilizing something like your phone your ipad because we're on them all day long anyway when you when you re- well i realized i don't know when i realized this because my i definitely have some form i've never been diagnosed but like if there's anything I have in this world, it's some form of ADHD. Mike, and don't worry. It's diagnosed. You're, is it diagnosed? You're you certified. diagnosed it? We, we've certified And I know it's yes. like a popular thing now that people, everyone says, but I'm like, it could be crippling. Like yeah. sometimes I have crippling, <laughs> can't get out of like a swirl of like jumping from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. But what I found is that when you realize that everything, the whole game of life is trying to implement your attention and what you want to do over other people's. That's the mm-hmm. whole game of life. All day for me, I'm getting incoming input from everyone. And if I don't implement what I want to do and ignore some things and be strategic about how I respond to it, you don't get anything done. Mm-hmm. And then you don't make any money and you fail at life and your job and you go live in a hut. So <laughs> how about you, Chef? How about you, Chef? So no, because that's like the goal too. You know? <laughs> if I make it, I'm going to be a hibachi chef. So um, ADHD is finest. It, it, there, there you go. go. That's a perfect there example. Um, but yeah, like the it's so clear that attention, even now, I mean, especially now, is hard to hold on to. Yes. So it's like you, you just got to be conscious of it. You just got to keep like I'm conscious of it. I don't always am able to prevent it, the sidetracking, but I know it's happening, mm-hmm. which is I think at least a step. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. But I'm diving in. It's not good. I'm looking at food now for half an hour, but you know what? At least I know I'm doing it. Yes, sir. Follow up with us. I want to know if you uh, you end up accomplishing these uh, these goals. Yeah, primarily the ten pounds because I'd love to know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Look at this camera. I, I can't get enough. You He's telling crazy, us it's the same camera. He looks nine ninety thousand times better, better than we do. Look at his skin; Actually, it's glistening. You look right. tan too. It is a different outfit. Absolutely. Finally, at least he is honest about it. <laughs> I got um, pimples all over my face, and this guy has a uh, you know some, co- look some at this, correcting color <laughs> correcting filter over there. So I believe that both of you are ADHD. <laughs> but, um, I've been having a hard time with two guys at work. We work collaboratively as a team, but honestly, I think I think their ideas are not very good. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't follow. <laughs> they come off lazy, and there's never a challenge. We work in a mid-sized college administrative. Uh, office responsible for student initiatives and outreach. Any thoughts on how to encourage innovation or creativity? Yes. Fire them and get new people. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Let Mike start us out. I, I, Mike works so alone. Base, 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 over. I was <laughs> staring at the blue and red light on the back of his phone. It's a team environment. One of the members is finding that the other, CV, correct me if I'm wrong, the other two individuals are come somewhat a little lazy and this individual is looking for ways to encourage uh new ideas and creativity uh you gotta incentivize them you know that's a good that, that is that's true. the only way to get anything done is like right. all right what well, why are they not incentivized mm-hmm. what would incentivize is it money is it recognition is it autonomy wow mm-hmm. speaking on recognition right 
So I just heard Bang, a st- baby. I heard a statistic um, actually this morning. That's why did you say that? And it said people would rather, and this is this, this was just a study done. They'd rather um, have recognition ten times greater than an actual financial amount. See, I'm the opposite, which is crazy. Really? Me too. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want that. I'm the opposite. I wouldn't want that. I would want me the money, ah. but well, not me. You know what I would like? What a combination? With autonomy? No. Oh, autonomy. to work by yourself. Yeah. No, yeah, no, 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 not even to work by yourself. I don't think it's even just work, um, to work, to have, I guess, control of how yeah. you work and how you get things done, <clears throat> what you get done. Yeah. I think that's some, to me personally, that's what, and I think that's goes mm-hmm. to what you said, Mike, that you have to figure out what incentivizes people. Because yes. sometimes there's recognition, sometimes yeah. it is money. And if it is something like autonomy, like it is for me, that mm-hmm. makes me thrive. It makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Whereas the money, yeah, that's always good. For a little bit of time, yeah. Until that that amount of money is not enough, right? If you, know? you if you told me I would have to give up all my public brands, and you would give me a certain amount of leads to like guarantee me a very lucrative career and yep. do our own portfolio, I'd probably trade it all. Yeah, no problem. Um, no, it's a good. That, that's I only a very do it because one. it's a necessary it's, evil. Like, think, yep, you have to be public at least from where I'm coming from to be able to compete, right? Um, and, and when you hear incentives, you know, you do have to now be creative on what you can incentivize. But ne- for whatever reason, the thought that popped up in my head when I heard this is like, you do have to have some level of a real conversation that has to happen. And if there's statistics, I'm a very like data driven guy these days because we know, baby, yeah, I mean, you <laughs> have to be, data. right? You have to be, cause temps, if you're not, then it's just, <laughs> it's just words that are just flowing around or like I did this or I did that, but yeah, really what's the data behind it, especially in business. Um, get back to a time where you can really articulate to them statistically on maybe they said they were in, in outreach and stuff like that and new initiatives for yes, students. Yes. So when were you guys at your best, all three of you? Right. What are the things that you guys did? Go back and look at some, you know, real life scenarios of maybe what fell off and have that conversation. Um, I think changing the atmosphere is also good. Um, You know, if you guys are are uh, or if you're noticing that they're lazy, like why not maybe go to lunch somewhere and like spark a different type of conversation through an environment shift. Um, okay. Kind of like the the last question, I guess, but that's something that I've definitely done in the past. You know, when, when I've had somebody who's close to me on my team struggling, it's like, hey, listen, you know, we got to get out of here for a minute. Uh, go to, the, you know, Starbucks, go somewhere where you're not sitting in, a, in that environment because that environment, that person who's lazy is typically attaching that environment to laziness and, and work, you know? Well said. I think this also speaks a little bit to the relationship because I think when you have – a positive relationship, mm-hmm. it makes it a little easier to kind of get to the root of what maybe the the issue or the, or what's going on is. Mm-hmm. But when the relationship is not a positive one, and usually when in, in any work setting, when things start going downhill, it's that much harder to, to even grab a positive relationship out of anything. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like, you know, like a, like a donkey when mm-hmm. you want them to move and you're pulling them and donkey. pulling them and they don't move. They're going to yep. be stubborn as, you know, and they're not going to move. Yeah. Whereas when you're having a positive relationship, you at least have the ability to be able to get to the, to the, to the bottom That's of what it point. could be, you know? Um, a, a quick point is through being with all different types of people all day, like sometimes five hours of time in my car and it's just me and them and chatting you start to like recognize patterns on people. And what I've recognized is that sometimes people light up and get passionate. Like when we were talking about food and then CV lit up and was talking about Dino BBQ mm-hmm. and like, they, and like you lit up Dino, about, Dino. yeah, you light up about certain things like cigars, watches. Yeah. Like it's so easy if you're looking for it to see that when people hit a note that they like and they're yes. passionate about. So what I try to do is like lean into that because I'm, like the ADD is helpful because I get passionate about a lot of things. Like if you're passionate, I'm going to jump in. We're like, out. We're going. I would love to learn about like, yeah, yeah. We go exactly. fishing, We've done baby. that multiple yeah, yeah. times <laughs> where like you'll jump into a convo with someone and they're passionate, which makes me passionate. Yeah. And that's why I think I like jumping around things. But um, if you can align something in yep. the passion with what they're doing, even in a creative way, like, you know, with the events thing, like Ashley kept saying, like, I really want to do events. I really want to do events. And every time she talked about events and hosting things. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fight anymore. Like, if you want to do something, let's do it. You know, let's do it. Oh, so this one, that's a that's a very good point. And that just sparked uh, another thought that I've done recently. If this is the case where you believe that these two individuals are either lazy or their ideas are just not as creative as you'd like them to be, one thing you can do is act on one of their good ideas. 
You know when you get to a point when you're in business where this person who's lazy, one, you know they're lazy, then when they say anything, you're just kind of like, yeah, this is the lazy person. I'm not going to really respect what they're saying. Not that you did that with Ashley because you're not saying that she's lazy, but you acted immediately on an idea that she had, which probably was inspirational to her to say, listen, you know what? I had an idea. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, you know, and now you're like, yeah, go for it. Right. Yeah. That now really incentivizes Ashley to go have a really good event. So what you could do is when this person does say something that is, you know, of I guess uh, some sort of positivity and can benefit you act on it immediately. Don't put it off. Cause that will, that will spark some, some level of, of growth for that person. Yeah. I put it off for a little while, but <laughs> yeah. So here's a, a little wrench into the, into the questie. Um, I almost, I think, I feel like this is um, a lot of times when relationships and, and work environments get a little bit funky, mm -hmm. they stem from usually personality traits for whatever reason yep. whether you like or don't like or whatever but a lot of times the bigger disagreements where certain staff will then get disgruntled or not want to work is usually the methodology right so if they don't agree with the way the in this case the, the boss or the person that's in charge does things or they don't agree with the way they even like see the outlook or of the plan or or, or the or the goals then they automatically shift into this place of like well that's dumb i don't want to listen to this person anymore and they little by little start kind of going down this downhill bat, uh, mm -hmm. hill where they're now start becoming maybe more lazy maybe their ideas they're not giving you the best of their ideas because why am i going to give you the best of my idea if you're just going to take it later and do something different with it so it's a very different um perspective when you look at it that way because i think once you get into this place it's very difficult to get out of this place because mm -hmm. you're basically needing that other person to meet you halfway and if they're not willing to meet you halfway because they just don't agree with you, how do we move forward? Yeah, then there's a you have to shift. You yeah. know, I, I'm not Who's a good person shift? for this That's uh, the point, scenario because there's no like restrictions in how I can do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like if someone's not working, they can right. leave and we'll find something. Yeah. You know, like so I'm not a good example for this because um, I'm not forced to work with anyone. I guess clients I could work with, but. Even in that sense, it's a different relationship where I'm servicing them, so it's yeah. not like a. But even think you know, about, so. So for you, I got you because it's a little it's easier. Different. You, you can kind of be like, "Yeah, yes. you're not working. Goodbye." Um, yeah. But what happens if it's somebody that you actually that gives you a good product? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they do give you give you either a good product or they worked hard for you or whatever it is. There's some value there that you see that is worth not saying, "Hey, you got to go." Well, my my philosophy, how I've least built out my really small team. I mean, I have a tiny team, but we I I filtered on attitude first. So people who are coming in and working with me already, the first thing I look for is like, how would you work attitude wise? Are you positive? Are you learn willing to learn? And if they don't cut that, they don't join. Mm -hmm. That's good. So um, then, but I who's telling to, you I that they're not going to be that? What? Who's going to tell you in the interview? Oh, I'm not positive. Well, no, 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 it's no, not an interview. Course, but it's also, like I can tell when I'm talking with people and just like the non-verbals. I don't interview anyone. It's literally like we do a trial run of just working on like a project, mm -hmm. and if I like how you work. I try to extend more responsibilities. And then if you're like in the groove, then I have the convo of like, listen, I like what you're doing. Like, I'd like to bring in a more formal approach. It'll be the same thing. You know, at the end of the day, I just want to work with people I'd have a beer with yeah. and then go from there. I've had, uh, I've had this scenario, CV, where, you know, I, there's been certain employees who have been in the organization that were in much longer than, than I have. Um, and you have to be the one to shift your perspective. I think we have, and not you personally, I'm just saying, you know, the, the other individual, we have a false um, understanding of true timelines in our life. We want the get rich quick scheme. We want the, you know, uh, get me fit immediately. We want the employee to turn over right away. Whereas the reality is if this is a 30 year career, me having four bad years with this one person really isn't the end of the world because I can have 20 plus that are really good. So my question back would be like, what are you doing? If that is the scenario and you can't fire somebody, how much time have you really put in behind the scenes with this person? And it's a it's a it's a process. Right. And it's it's um, nothing quick about it, you know, but it's it's positive experience after positive experience, negative, negative, negative. You're going backwards. You're going forwards. But eventually the hope is to move in a positive direction all the time. But a yeah. lot of work has to be put in. It is tough. It is tough. Sorry, I said that's tough. That's right. <laughs> oh, there goes my microphone. Different now. Freeze. <clears throat> okay, next question. Are we ready for the next question? Yeah. Why does Mike hang sausages from his... That is an interesting <laughs> question. Ambiance. 
I easy have access to snacks. I have Good. a question. Do you actually are you leave them there? You, <laughs> that would be the worst um, thing. Are I, you, are you no, I, them I, out? I eat half the second. The, <laughs> the the smaller piece was consumed last night, and then the other half is laying on my counter. <laughs> oh, okay. It's great. So it's I'm Good I'm not just hyping them up. Scarpelli sausage, dry CV's sausage big, oh, is the delicious. best. Sausage. CV's a big sausage. Guy. I mean, not the CV. <laughs> best, CV the big sausage. <laughs> <laughs> best. Dry sausage I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Wow. Hands down. Really? Yep. Because it's like juicy. Right, as talk well. to us. Talk to it's, us. It's, it's wow. Let's go. We got to stay on track well, why here. Can't Come you on. Bring this. Like I don't understand. Mikey's got to go. I could have. I just. I'm always. The late, next is so. going to be. He's going to be hanging him out the window, swinging him around. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be my business card. Oh, you want a you want a business card here? It's on the sausage. <laughs> Buy a house. I'll give you a sausage. There's a tag and then just sausage. <laughs> it's a good housewarming. It is. All right. Uh, next question. I am finally in a position to buy my first home in Connecticut. Tell Mike it's not in Greenwich. Sorry. <laughs> now I'm expanding. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I am debating uh, putting 10% down versus 20%, but I don't want to make things difficult for me financially in any way. So I'm leaning towards the 10. What's your opinion? I don't think you can ever be too conservative um, because you could always do something in the future to alleviate that. I hate for people to overextend yes. and then dig themselves a hole right off the bat. Yeah. Um, right? I mean, it sounds like you've done a somewhat research, done some research, because if you're saying, if you're saying that you're going to put yourself in a financial hole, you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but also like, you know, thinking of the last conversation we had about the HELOC, which we, we actually got some really good uh, feedback on that, which was pretty cool. Hope it was helpful for people um, it, on a HELOC situation or any sort of return on investment, sooner rather than later, it's always better to put more down if you have the avail availability to do that because you can pretty much return that money right away once things are, are positive. So you can use it as leverage. Um, I'm also a firm believer, and I don't know how you feel about this. This is very specific to my industry, um, to where you have a fixed salary, um, not too many opportunities you know, in the, in the industry to make additional money on a significant amount. So like my mortgage, I'd rather see at a smaller number than a larger number. And then there's also what's called um, PMI. Pers yeah, PMI, personalized mortgage insurance. And I have experience with PMI and I have experience without PMI. I put 3% down on my first investment property. I had a $580 PMI payment, which is basically in the garbage for two years until you acquire at least, what, tw um, 20% 20. 20 of uh, equity in the It'd house. It'd be more than two years, I hope. Uh, it depends well, it on happened, the it happened in two yeah, and a yeah. half years You locked me. out yeah, for two years. Yeah, yeah, it happened in two and a half years, which was good. Um, but, you know, I really only did that because it was an investment property and money was coming in to pay the PMI. So I didn't really care about that. But on my own home, I was like, over my dead body, am I going to pay another $600 a month? Um you know, that's just going to go in the garbage. So I'd rather honestly save a little bit more. And and if it's not, it doesn't have to be 10 or 20, right? If you can yeah. get to 15, get to 15. If you can get to 18, get to 18. There'll still be a little PMI, but your PMI might be, you know, a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it, to your point, I think it's all case by case basis. Absolutely. It's level of risk. You know, how comfortable are you? Um, how much income you're making. There's you a lot of fluctuating variables. salary. Yeah. Are you in sales commissions? Something like that. So typically what I would talk to my, if I had a client, if you were my client would be basically like, Hey, all right, what's your situation? How much money have you saved? Are you going to do renovations? Right. Can you live in the property? Are you going to be here forever? Are you going to be here for five years? A lot of it is a strategy on a case by case. Um, but just the fact that you could put 20% down means you're in a decent financial position. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a, you need more input to give a better recommendation on that. Yeah, yeah. So we basically give you the... All in my answers. early career, like in my personal life, I was really comfortable putting down 5%, 10%, whatever it was. Now as I'm getting a little less risk um, you know, tolerant, I'll probably put more down in the future just because it doesn't make sense anymore. When you're starting out, you got to take yeah. a little more risk to mm -hmm. get the momentum. But now that I have a little... Uh, some more things on the chessboard, I'd rather just get the right property at a higher deposit and uh, versus, you know, really trying to go more risky hmm. because of my outlook. I'm going yeah. 30 years. I'm my philosophy is to never sell. So if I'm never going to sell, right. it's difference? more about setting myself up with a low mortgage so that I can get that income and recoup it. Right. I like that talk. Yes, sir. You know, but All good right. luck. Yeah. If it's anywhere close to Greenwich as a starting out person, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I'd, I'd consider working with you. All right. Last question. 
I just bought my husband the carrier from Tactical Baby Gear, and TBG. we absolutely love it. By the way, they just put a commercial out the other day or on their feeds. Oh, they're carriers. Not, I know merch. they're for babies, but yeah, good merch. I want to put in my EV put stuff some cameras on in there, yeah. bro. One hundred percent. Put me in there. I, I put, rugged, I put man. all types of stuff. Put me the backpack in. Um, is a... thanks for recommending it. I had a baby fourteen weeks ago, and I feel I should be back in better shape. Mm. This may seem so random, but my core feels really weak. What is a simple core routine oh, I can I implement that. almost immediately? Uh, cat breathing, breathing, maybe. Do you ever do those? <laughs> Have you ever done those? Is that what it's called? I don't even know what that is. So when you're like sitting or whatever, you got to just like pull your stomach as far as possible in and you hold it. Can you show us? Yeah. Can you please show us? You got to sit. Look, you got to, uh, you don't have the right angle, but you basically <laughs> say you're sitting at a red light. I got you. No problem. You, you Let's pull go. your stomach in and squeeze and hold it for like as long as you can. It's like a... It's like a plank. Plank. Can you Ooh. do the noises? So very good. Um, right or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, first if off. He's, if he's a 14-year-old and they don't sleep, if you're, you got one of those kids. Wait, 14 weeks. That's a yeah. girl. Who? Isn't this a female? Uh, whoever it is. Yeah, if the so. kid doesn't she just sleep. She just had a baby. She just well, you don't know these days. <laughs> well, I'm saying if the kid doesn't the sleep, uh, you got to <laughs> incorporate Government it politics, all this stuff gets crazy. I don't know. No, if People you, might be offended. If you go into... Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to think of something you could do no matter what. No, that's a good point. Um, so, well, first also... Congratulations. But 14 weeks is that's not even four yeah, you months. You definitely shouldn't be in shape. Right, right. So the, yeah, you're you're spot you're on. You're, you're out of shape, you're spot you're on. You're nuts. <laughs> um, no, I listen, we know this uh very well, but women are incredible when it comes to the childbirth um process. You know, so shout out to you for 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 that. Making a person. Yeah, really. Shout out. Uh, be a little bit uh more lenient with yourself. But I think this is a deeper conversation, actually. Um, one that actually reminds me of even my grandfather. Believe it or not. So when he was, um, you know, when he when he first checked into uh, his final home where he would eventually, you know, die. Um, what, what's what's that? Assisted living? Is that what we're, yes, assisted living. I noticed, and this is where I really became like conscious of this stuff. Your core is really in everything that you do, whether it's like carrying a baby, whether you sneeze, whether you cough, whether you're driving around all day, you get out of bed. Right. So the conversation with my grandfather, I remember he used to be this strong, strong guy, but he would struggle to get out of bed. And I saw that his just his core strength was gone. So I think this conversation is bigger. We should all be focusing on the um, on our core, not just for the appearance wise. And core includes abs and back. Yes, correct. Um, so the conversation and I guess really what you're asking for is a simple routine. Um, but Mike said a word which I agree with 100 percent would be a plank. Right. Because a plank is something that you can. You can adapt to it. You can planks are great. I used to offer them in, in boot camps all the time because you can do a plank and you could do a plank on one knee. You can modify that exercise, right? Um, I think scissor kicks are great. So that's you know your your lower core. And then honestly, crunches. Um, I think a good goal can be like adjusting slowly. I think if you did 20 seconds of a plank, and then the goal is to do 10 scissor kicks and then 10 crunches, you do that for three sets. That's good. Now take it to the next level and try to do that plank for one minute, right? So don't quit this routine until you could plank for one minute and get all the way up to 25 each. And now once you do that, then it's probably time for a different routine. Um, but if you're asking for like a base level thing that you can do, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I tried to get my grandfather to do this, but it was just too late. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not comparing, you know, pregnant women to my grandfather. So don't, <laughs> don't take this out of context. All right. But, you know, the conversation really as a society, we should be training our core uh, much more than we do. P90X you know? too is great. You, you were probably going to offer the same, uh, same thing. The same thing. Same Mike does, Mike's favorite routine is the shake weight. He does that, but he does that with the, I uh, do it with the my, two sausages hanging from, this, from, his, uh, from his windshield. Um, uh, <laughs> you know what's a great core workout? With the kid, when you're going up and down from like a couch. Mm -hmm. So if you want to incorporate your kid into it once they get a little older and more sturdy. Um, I, it, at it, 16 weeks, you're like, the, the, you know, the, the parent strength like, or the dad strength, mom strength, no whatever you call. It's so true because all day you're just holding kids bicep. and you're lifting kids. That's you're why your bicep is bigger. Probably my left one because I hold her in my <laughs> left exactly all the time. Why. So you're making food and you're making Not Juliana's. Lie. It Juliana's, was your right arm that was a little uh, Was it? <laughs> Juliana's a house. <laughs> holding her, she's got to be 23 pounds yeah. probably. And it's just like dead weight that you're kind of trying to make a bottle. Mm -hmm. It's awkward too. You're leaning over things. with. The, you're doing a lot of core. That's why I pulled my back, I think. Oof. So there's just too much going yeah. on. 
Um, yeah, good luck to you. This is not an easy time, uh, but yeah. I'm I'm happy that I'm not in that same situation with the uh, 16. Weeks. I just had a flashback, and I'm like, <laughs> Jesus go. Christ, that's pretty close for you though, too. No, she's seven she's, months. Okay. She's not the problem. I don't even remember. Libby's that time the problem. Right? Libby's the one who still doesn't sleep. Tough. She's two. She's almost three. Bothering me, right? It's crazy. I know. Juliana's like, sleeping like a rock. Go to sleep. I can't believe they're going to be three. If Juliana, I, I don't want to jinx it, but control. she's been sleeping like a rock. That's beautiful. Big mama, sleeper. Beautiful. Livy, my twin, my ADD twin, <laughs> not a sleeper. <laughs> Any more questies? Are we good? That's awesome. It's a wrap. That's a wrap. Like a chicken Boom. salad wrap. So, <laughs> so this will bring us to my favorite section, Dave's Dime of the Week. Dime, 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 dime. dime, dime. dime. This is uh, very personal to me right now, trying to be on a uh, on a, a, a Zen mode. And I've noticed that there's a lot of people in my life that are pulling in different directions. Your hand motions. My hand motions. If, I mean, if, it's reminding Mike of the sausages <laughs> hanging from from the uh, from the windshield. You, your hand motions are so animated. Like, I know. <laughs> if someone pulled just the clip on mute, they would think you're the guy for like a walk a flock of flame concert <laughs> on the side. Um. So it's. <laughs> This is hard for us, I know, to get through. Um, but so, you know, my, my intention has been that lately, trying to surround myself um, with individuals who, you know, really just uh, provide some level of encouragement or positivity. So the quote goes like this. Don't surround yourself with people who need you more than they feed you. Now, Michael's getting excited because he heard feed you and he's thinking of food. Right, that could be one thing. It could be a nice gesture. So you're surrounded with people that just feed you, but but the reality is the energy is big. So if you constantly need to be the one going out, and this is me. I mean, I get it. I'm an encourager. I want everybody around me to win. Feed I, everyone. I feed everybody, and that's cool. But you know, if this is a tough time in my life, I need to be conscious of surrounding myself with the needy. Right. So just monitor. The relationships that are around you, um, and this is something that I'm dealing with right now, so I figured I'd, I'd share. But let the people feed you, Mikey. Listen, I, I'm fortunate. Everyone's feeding daddy. <laughs> so Actually, I don't like saying third-person daddy. That's kind of weird. It uh, sounds like Dave Regina-esque. I have to say, right? it, yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. You're rubbing off on me. It does. But no, most of my people that I'm cool with feed me, so we're good. I don't <laughs> so, think I cut anyone out of the life. So we're good. We're good. Yeah. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in, whether it's been 143 or one. We thank you for your support. Michael, let them know where to shop, please. But if it's 143, we like it a little more. Yeah, that's uh, right. No snooze shop .com. Buy something so we can get a heater because I, I don't know if you can see my goosebumps. I'm freezing. My goosebumps. Guys, so until next time, we thank you. Stop snoozing. Get up. And hang that sausage from your mirror. <laughs> and get after it. <laughs> I was going to try to hold on as long as possible. That's, that's another Epi in the Books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze. Come on. Come on.